Hey everybody, figured I'd put together a little video on the Drag Week, Sick Week trailer um, modifications and whatnot. So I picked this up out of Texas uh, and I'm in South Carolina. So a guy, I, I had a guy go out to California to pick up my big um, 34 foot Intec enclosed trailer and on his way out there found this in Texas. So I called him up and I said, hey man, on your way back, can you pick this thing up? So he got it for me. Uh, this is a Sundowner, it's the company. I think they call this a Mini Go. This is a, uh, it's a four by six by four enclosed. Once I saw that the roof lifted open, I was uh, immediately had to have one because the roof lifts open in this one too. So uh, it only made sense. So it's pretty sweet that the roof does lift open because then you can, you know, kind of come over here and reach in and grab some shit. So anyway, a little four by six, uh, came with a spare in front, old diamond plate deal. Jack is screwed, gotta change that. Gotta polish it and then um, I'm having it, uh, the whole roof's aluminum. The whole construction of the trailer is aluminum. So uh, all of the trailer is all aluminum, the frame and everything. So if we look in here, you see the door, this is all aluminum. Um, you know, all the framework in here is all aluminum. So anyway, I started laying out what, um, what was gonna go in this thing. And I've never done a full, you know, thousand mile drag week type event. So this is new to me. So if you're watching this and you've got some opinions uh, or suggestions, I am definitely all ears. So um, I kind of, me and my fabricator, Matt Smith at Performance Fab, we kind of sat down and thought about, you know, hey, what are we gonna need? What kind of space do we got to work with? And uh, kind of went from there. So the first thing is uh, I, I'm almost positive I'm gonna just try to do this entire thing on alcohol because I'm not 100% sure that uh, I'm gonna have access to E85 everywhere and I've never pulled the trailer with the car, so I don't know how warm it'll run on 93. I don't, I don't know. Um, I could be, you know, overanalyzing this and it could run very cold, but uh, currently driving around town on alcohol, it doesn't get over 160 degrees. And uh, on E85, it doesn't get over like 170, whatever. I mean, really I could kind of regulate that with a fan. I'm just a little leery about it with, uh, with 93, so my thought process was, I want to be able to have enough fuel um, to be able to make, you know, however many miles in between tracks and be able to refuel without getting, you know, extorted at the racetrack and find out five gallon pails of methanol. So uh, the first thing that we did, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that if I said we, and it involves like fabrication, I didn't do it because I don't do that kind of stuff. So when I say we, I mean, the first thing that Matt did was make me a 31 gallon fuel cell. So this is um, it's 31 gallons, it's aluminum. Um, I've drilled and tapped the frame rails on it. It's got uh, you know six mounting points in it. He, um, you know, put some tabs on it. So this will hold 31 gallons, it's obviously not going to run and refill the car when you're going down the road, but it will still hold 31 gallons. And the footprint on it is a little bit easier to deal with than six of those, right? So um, it, we, he, there we go. He drilled it for a 12 bolt um, fuel cell flange. Uh, thought I had one around here, maybe I don't. But um, he drilled it for a for a standard fuel cell flange, and I ordered up a Holly dual 450 liter per hour pump, like fuel pump module, so it drops in like into your fuel cell. And I'll make a little video on that when it gets here. Um, so the plan is to drop that in here, adjust it for the depth, and then it's got a little filler neck, like there's like a little hole. 
uh, there's a little hole so you can put, you know, to the, the gas pump if you want or however you're going to fill it. Um, and then there's an outlet that comes out of the pump, you know, and then there's a return line. So I'm going to cap the return and because I don't need a return because we're going to be filling up, you know, the, uh, the fuel cell in the car. Uh, and then I'm going to put a 10 micron filter. The plan is to have the hose come off here go to a 10 micron filter that's going to mount to the wall here, pointing downward, and then the hose will come off with a 90, a swivel 90, here, pretty low, and gonna hang like a, uh, one of these guys, somewhere about there, to hold the hose. So that, you know, it's kinda out of the way when the, uh, when the door's shut. Be using a Stalbly uh, quick connector on the hose so that you know you can shut it off and you don't have to worry about it leaking out of the hose and whatnot. So um, so you know when it's wrapped up and you're going on the road, you don't have to worry about it all you know dripping out of there. There's there's two fittings down on the bottom of the cell. The original idea was to have an external pump, but then when I stumbled upon the um, uh, the fuel pump module that actually flows when it flows at that pressure, I got a feeling it's going to flow a heck of a lot more when there's no pressure. So these will just be used for a drain. Um, you know, it's two drains. So that one will just get plugged up, but then I'll put a drain here uh, and then you'll be able to drain it out this way. So, and the other thought was if the fuel pump were to die for some reason, um, I could just open up the drain and drain it into a five gallon pail. So that's the fuel cell. Put some trailer, you know, like uh, storage stuff up there to hold some, uh, to hold some liquids. My thought process was to bring three cases of oil, enough transmission fluid to, um, you know, refill the trans, enough gear oil if I broke a ring gear, enough brake clean to clean it all up. Um, some spray detailer, uh, cause I gotta keep it clean. Uh, you know, some towels, yada, yada. The other thing that's in there is a little Predator 2000 um, generator. And then that's a Milwaukee 18, like an M18 battery powered air compressor. Uh, I'm going to, I think what I'm gonna do is put, I was thinking about putting a battery in this thing, but I, I think I'm gonna, you know, forego that, put a, I was gonna put a car battery in here um, and be able to, uh, you know, charge the, the, you know, whatever, run the 12 volt shit off of the, uh, off the car battery, but I think I'll just stick with um, using the generator and uh, there's a 12 volt output off the generator. So, brought a fan, cause it's Florida and I got a feeling it's probably gonna be like swampish like down there. Um, and if you couldn't tell, I've kind of got like a Milwaukee obsession. Not really an obsession, it's my fiance's fault. Um, she started buying me this shit for holidays and uh, it's kind of spiraled out of control. But my big trailer's got more of Milwaukee parts in it. But I know that this is going to get asked. Um, so I'll just kind of give you a quick rundown of what's like right here. We're going to put those in the trailer. But there's more of them over there. And like every light that Milwaukee makes. And then, of course, everybody's gonna wanna ask. Um, this is all stuff that cuts or grinds from Milwaukee. And then, since everyone's gonna ask, there's a whole bunch of other shit in here. So yes, I do have a Milwaukee obsession. Oh, there's more shit over there too, but whatever. Anyway, the pack out stuff is going to go in, hold spare parts, tools, yada, yada. Uh, and then the um, this line that I've got here in blue tape, that's crooked, but I, it, it's at a reference point. Uh, my plan was to put tires, stand them up, one here, one back there. So, uh, you know, like just in front of each other so you could roll them out real easy. Then I put a a uh, little aluminum jack pouch that you'd use in a trailer on the back door. I've got two Milwaukee M18 battery um, mounts like with leads coming off of it for, for 12 volt type stuff that is gonna mount here, right here. 
to run the fuel pump and another one here. And then I was going to, uh, I've yet to find something that I actually like, but uh, my plan was to line this wall with any type of batteries and power tools and battery charger and whatnot. Um, so that, you know, the, so you can charge all the Milwaukee batteries if you're using them and whatnot. And then um, also be able to run the fuel pump with the M18 battery or use the little jumpers that come off of the generator if this fuel pump died or plan C, be able to drain the tank out into a five gallon pail. The five gallon jugs, I figured I'd put, um, you know, five gallons of pump gas in one for the generator and another five gallons of alcohol here. So if everything were to work perfect, I should be able to hold 36 gallons of methanol in here and 17 gallons of methanol in the car. Um, the, I figured, you know, you fill up the, fill up the fuel cell before you leave uh, the racetrack, drive however far, uh, however far the ride is. I think 17 gallons, I think I'm gonna be able to pull in the trailer, I think I'm gonna be able to get somewhere in the neighborhood of nine to 10 miles at a gallon, um, like on a highway, uh, on alcohol. So I believe the longest drive we've got is like 190 miles. So if I can get 10 miles at a gallon out of it, I should be able to get 100 and, you know, 50, 170 ish uh, before having to pull over. And then I pull over, put in enough fuel to get to the hotel, then to the racetrack the next day, and then make a pass on that fuel, rinse, repeat, do the same shit the next day. So fuel has been my, uh, my biggest, you know, thing that's been like, you know, on my mind here about what I want to do. Um, I know if I put it on E85, the car without pulling a trailer, um, gets right in the neighborhood of like 15 on E85. So I just don't know if it's worthwhile to go through dumping fuels and whatnot. Um, so that was kind of my plan with that thing. So anyway, um, and oh, this is something else that's kind of slick. Oh yeah, there you go. That's what we drilled it to, but we're not using this. We're gonna use uh, you know, that fuel pump module. So here's something else that's pretty cool that Matt made. So this gain an air filter, right? So when you're driving down the road, this will be, you know, bolted like clamped to the turbo, right? And then it's gonna be kind of hard to do with one hand but you can peel this thing's muffin cap back, slide the filter out of it, and then you've just got an open inlet to the turbo. Make some passes. Uh, when you're about to hit the road, throw the filter back in it, ready to rock and roll. Um, I've got a few spare gears. I ordered up a spare, like all the parts to build a full center section. So I will have, I should have a spare center section uh, and just being 100% honest, if anything beyond what I bring with me breaks on the drive, I'm going to fuck home. So that's all there is to it. Uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll lick my wounds and figure out what, how to make it better for the next go around. This is, uh, you know, again, like I said, my first venture into this of doing these thousand mile, you know, drag and drive event. Like we had one that was local. It was only like I think it was only like a total of like 200 miles or something. Um, and it was pretty low key. So that's really my only firsthand experience with doing this with my personal car. So I've uh, been around plenty of guys that have done them. And you know, everybody says I'm overreacting, I'm overthinking it, but um, yeah, no, it is what it is. So anyway, uh, leave a comment underneath here. Let me know what you think, what I'm screwing up, what I should bring, um, you know, what I'm missing, what I shouldn't bring, uh, if I'm an idiot and I shouldn't do any of this and I should just go back to wiring race cars and don't even think about doing this. Let me know. Um, anyway, see you.